I got off school a couple minutes early and I'm gonna go out and do a little painting on the way home. Where are you gonna paint? Just right up here on Terrytown Road. I know. It gets dark so early, right? Yeah, I'm sad. What's up with that? Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle Martin, and this is day two of the 25 days of Vlogmas. And on my 25 days of Vlogmas, we're checking out some plein air painting. I just got off of work. It's about 3.30 in the afternoon, and I set up my easel, and I'm ready to paint out here on Terrytown Road. The subject matter that we're gonna be painting today is right behind me. It's these two weathered barns. Now, I like the, the barn boards. I like the broken windows in some of the windows on the barn. There's a lot of very striking details that I'm attracted to in this painting. But in today's painting, we're going to be trying to strip away those layers of detail and sort of unlearn what our analytic mind has taught us and we're going to instead observe and paint using painter's eyes. So our analytic mind really wants to see this subject matter in terms of detail. However, the motif this afternoon really is the late afternoon sunlight pouring over these barns. And we need to be able to see this in terms of the large shapes. This is just a disclaimer. This is just the way that I work, okay? I have an hour to paint this afternoon. I don't have 35 hours to get every single detail of all the of all the weathered barn boards and everything else. It's important for me during this hour to be able to get something on the canvas that shows the beautiful afternoon light pouring onto the face of the barn. I know the roadmap that I'm going to take to make this happen. And that's what I want to share with you guys in this video. I'm not putting down detailed painters or anything like that. To be honest with you, I'd love to be able to paint detail, but even more than that, for those who want to work with plenty of detail, you still want to be able to see your subject matter in terms of the large shapes and at the start. All that abstract composition means is that we're working with a series of shapes and we're taking out the detail. So let's get started. The easiest way to see a subject in terms of its large shapes is to take the color information away. What I do is I observe the subject matter through a red filtered lens. Yes, this makes everything red, but it also takes away the color information you're seeing in terms of contrast instead of in terms of color. Squinting your eyes will also help you see in terms of the large shapes. So I'm gonna be talking a lot about values in this video. If you think of the different shades of gray that you're seeing in this subject matter right now, you're thinking about the different values. I'm trying to keep this to just the major shapes. I'm gonna have the following value shapes to work with. Number one, the lightest value is the foundation of the barn. Number two, the second lightest value shapes are gonna be the ground planes, the barn boards, the lighter part of the roof, and also the sky. Number three, the next value that I'm gonna work with is going to be tippy the top of the gambrel roof barn. The fourth value that I'm gonna use is the shadow side of the barn, the shadows in the tree line behind the barn, and also the shadows falling onto the ground. The first value shape that I'm going to mix is the foundation of the barn, and it's almost white. So I'm just going to take some titanium white paint and mix in a touch of lemon yellow. And the yellow is way too bright. I need to neutralize it. I'm gonna add a touch of permanent rose and a pinhead of violet. Mm -hmm. 
This is a value that's very close to white. This is my lightest value and that's gonna work for me. The next lightest value that I'm perceiving on the barn is the weathered barn boards. There is a red part of the weathered barn boards, which I can, I've taken some vermilion and also some permanent orange, and I'm mixing white into it to raise the value. Anytime that you're raising the value of a warm color, anytime that you add white to a color like red or a warm color, you're going to kill its intensity. So I added a little bit of cadmium yellow to the mix to bring the intensity back up. So there's red barn boards and then there's air where the paint has stayed on the barn boards. And now I'm mixing up the color of the weathered barn boards. The barn boards where the paint has through the years been eroded off the side of the barn. So I've taken some turquoise, mixed that with some burnt sienna and added in a touch of Naples yellow. Seeing that, oh, might have added too much. And I think I need, I do need that. Okay, that's gonna work for the more weathered barn boards sitting right next door to the other bar the unweathered barn boards. Um, the color of the roof, as I observe that, I can see it's a it's a warm color. I use permanent rose plus white mixed in with yellow ochre, touch of burnt sienna, a touch of this gray green. I know that normally I have an umbrella up when I do this, so I'm just gonna use my body to shade the pile of paint. I'm trying to get the relative value correct. Checking it. It is much more green than what I've mixed. I can hold my knife right up to the subject matter and check the color of the paint very close it just needs a pinhead more of yellow ochre okay get rid of the rest of this there is the color and value of the barn next is the color and value of the ground all four of these colors should all be the same value I'm just taking yellow ochre observing it while I look up there it's slightly green. I'm taking a pinhead of thalo green. Thalo green's a powerful color. It's not gonna take much to influence that yellow ochre. And now I have that, that's the value and color of the grass. The sky has to be of the same value. And I'm gonna show you a little trick with the sky, but the first thing to do is I'm going to mix some indigo paint with white. Taking the value right to about the same as the rest of the values. Um, might need to go a little bit lighter to match that value. Also, okay, so now the next darkest value is the tippy top of the gambrel roof barn. I'm going to depict that by using burnt sienna, a little permanent rose, and some gray violet. This pile of paint has to be darker than these piles of paint. Not bad for a starting point. I'm going to add in a little bit of turquoise into this pile of paint. The pile of paint was too warm. Now I need to add a touch of burnt sienna and a touch of yellow ochre to bring that warm sunlight into the color. Just a little bit of this and 
that is going to be my tippy top of the barn. The tree line behind the barns is, this is, this is December and the leaves have fallen off the trees and the, the time of day, the golden hour is, uh, it, the, the colors are all becoming very brilliant this afternoon. Even though the trees do not have any leaves on them, I have a very warm color for the trees. Uh, yellow ochre is always a good place to start. Just need to cool it down slightly. To cool it down, I'll just take burnt sienna and a little turquoise, mix them off to the side, and then throw the whole thing together. That's gonna work for my trees in the background. Those two piles of paint should be darker than these piles of paint, according to my initial plan. Now beyond that, I have the shadow side of the barns. It's very violet. The evening light is illuminating the side of the barn with very warm colors. And nature always gives us contrast. So while a lot of these colors where the sun is illuminating them are warm colors, the shadow side of the barn is actually quite cool. So I've taken violet mixed in, a little bit of burnt sienna, a touch of turquoise, and that's going to get the party started for that. I also have the shadows happening on the trees behind the barn. And for those, I'm going to grab burnt sienna. I want to stay with the same value as I have right next door. These are my dark values. These are the areas of the painting where the sun is not touching the objects or the items in the painting. These are the shapes of shadow. And then finally, I have the shadows being cast onto the ground. I'm grabbing turquoise. Okay, I've mixed my colors, and now it's time to check them and make sure that my values are accurate. It's four o'clock now, the time is flying as I'm mixing my colors, but that's all right. I want to go into my camera, and I have an iPhone here, and I'm setting it towards mono. And what mono is, is black and white. So, my first color here, I don't know if you can see this through the camera, let me see. Yeah, maybe, and what I'll do is I'll just hold this on the screen as I'm talking about it, if I can get a good shot of it. You might just have to trust my word for this. The lightest thing is definitely the, okay, my middle tone values. Uh, this one actually needs to lighten just slightly the color of the ground plane, so I'm just gonna lighten that. Those two are quite similar, so I want to revisit this idea. I think what I want to do... Oh, this is the sky. Never mind. This is supposed to be the same value. So these, these piles of paint are all reading pretty well. And these two piles are quite a bit darker. That's good. Just checking, looking through the camera set to mono mode or black and white mode. And down here, these are very much darker. All right, I've put a lot of, I've put some serious time and thought and energy into breaking down my, into abstracting my subject matter and mixing up a good selection of colors to work from. I only have one, two, three. There's 11 colors that are gonna start this painting and then I'll be adding more colors after that. 
Today's lesson is all about building a solid foundation for your painting, and that's what we're after. I'm going to quit talking now, put the camera into time lapse mode, and we're gonna we're gonna speed through this painting. Uh, overall, I think it was a, a, a successful painting session. I've been working mainly on small panels lately. This is still a small panel, but it was good to get out here and and make this one happen. One thing that happened as I was actually painting was that there was a long shadow being cast over the little barn behind the big barn. And there was also the shadow of a tree being cast onto this barn. I probably could have used another half hour on this painting, but I'm happy that we got it to the place that it was. I'm happy to share this painting with all of you. If you have any questions, just, just put them into the comments below. But thanks so much for sticking with me. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Look right behind me. There's color in the sky. I'm going to set up another panel and do a very rapid little painting of the sunset that's happening right now. So I'm going to keep, keep the time warp going for that as well. But I'm not going to talk as much. So... Anyway, have a good night and I will, I'll see you all again tomorrow for the 25 days of plein air vlogmas. Have a good night.